Welcome to PBR Tool Time. We want to take a moment to thank our sponsors that bring this great content to your listening ears week after week. B&D Tools, innovative PDR accessories for PDR professionals. Edgy Tools, the king of PDR accessories that get the job done. CBDDirectOils.com. It's not marijuana, kids. It's perfectly legal relief for all your aches and pains. Well, 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 welcome to another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 181. I'm your host, Vince D'Alessandro, along with Daniel Grom, John Renstrom, and Hudson Tansy. What's going on, fellas? Hey, hey. Oh, man. Man, cool. I had the weirdest day today. It was like super, super busy. But get this. We had two of every car coming in today. Really? Two Teslas. <laughs> two vintage Mustangs, two red Chevy trucks. Um, what else? Were you building an arc? Oh, two two new Mustangs. <laughs> it was just two of everything, and it was super busy. It was just like nonstop, just rocking and rolling. Just a, a two for Tuesday, huh? Oh, it two, was weird. Oh, on Taco Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. on Taco. Yeah. Did you have two tacos uh-huh. for lunch? <laughs> and my little my little tony she's like it's tony mercury ret- it's mercury retrograde I'm like what is that hippie crap you're spewing out you know <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by the letter t <laughs> yeah, for, for two for tuesday yes <laughs> two right? of everything oh okay. taco tuesday well, that's interesting that's interesting yeah it is weird co- how it comes in waves sometimes like one week i'll work on minis like all week long like five yeah. six seven minis right? and then like all next week it's all german cars of uh you know audis and bmws it's bizarre how yeah. it happens for me it was <laughs> always super duties it was yeah. like fix all these normal cars and then i get a whole week of super duties yeah oh boy. i'm just tired of all the rolls royces yeah. <laughs> ah, listen. Yeah. Logos, all the no, I'm just joking. Actually, I do have a Rolls Royce. I do have to work on tomorrow. <laughs> you know what? You though? come up. I would rather work on normal production cars than friggin' Rolls Royces any day. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. If you come to South Dakota with me, Hudson, I'll fix a couple of Rolls for you. You can fix a couple of Pintos for me. You know, it's <laughs> <that's> all good. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to say, I've never worked on a Pinto. <laughs> I I probably haven't worked on one in thirty years. Yeah, I've so. worked on a Chevy Sonic of all things. Oh, well, that's a, that's How back about out. A Gremlin. Have you ever worked on a Gremlin? A Pacer, Pacer, um, uh, the old AMC. Pacer or Gremlin? I've never worked on Vince's children. Yeah, yeah. Children, child. I, <laughs> I had a, a '76 Mercury Capri that I just got rid of a few years ago. That was a pretty cool little oh, car man yeah <laughs> actually nice. i sold it to someone up in northern california up in your neck of the woods daniel he collected them yeah. yeah there's some dumb people up here yeah <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> i think the oldest the oldest car i did a full hail job on was a, a 64 Buick. i had a guy who was moving his old uh old ferraris around and it started hailing while he's moving his like shifting his Ferraris inside and out, mm. and two of them uh, got hail damage on them, and it was back before they had um, three stage uh, the the three stage paint or yeah. the yeah. basically no clear coat. Right. Yeah. And, single oh, stage paint. Single stage. Yeah. Single stage. There we go. When the red when the red comes off on your your buffer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That kind. And I was like, I can't fix this. He's like, What? I'm like, I can't glue pull this. Like, in over like seventy percent of the dents were all would all require glue pulling. Oh. Oh bummer. wow. And uh, so that dude had to get. It was pretty much flawless. Why can't you glue pull on that? No pull paint. Yeah. Single pull stage. Paint. Yeah, really? that would have been a, yeah at that age that would have been an acrylic enamel I, at best. Yeah, but I pulled on that before. It would have been. If risky. The paint's going to come off on your buffing pad. It's definitely going to come off. <laughs> when you're pulling, all right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you test that one out there, buddy. It's been interesting. We had to do a, a '66 Ferrari, but we just kept it hot. And I, I mean, we kept it very hot. It had a sharp dent from the bumperette from another Ferrari. Yeah. I have no problem pushing on those on those dents. It's yeah. just yeah. I won't glue pull. Yeah. The, the worst car I've ever worked on was a Lamborghini Diablo and it had a door ding and it had the the wing doors 
and I had to take the door panel off. And I must have had 50 to 60 little tiny friggin' screws. screws. Yes. <laughs> and in the door panel. Oh, these wow. little tiny, tiny, yeah. tiny screws. And oh, it was like maddening. I'm a diva now. I won't, unless you give me the schematics on how to take like a door panel off on a Lambo or rolls or anything. Like, I just tell the service department at my dealerships, like, hey, there's this guy, Hudson Tansy, that puts all these videos that show you how to do that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, you should watch it, especially gas yeah. doors. Yeah, gas yeah. doors. He's really oh, good at those. Gosh. <laughs> Oh gosh. I said, I'm a diva. I do not like it. Hey, if it's easy to take apart, I will take it apart. But yet you're known for showing us how to take off shit. I haven't done a gas door <laughs> in so long. I was, well, I think I've made the video on all the ones I take apart. Like it, they're yeah. all, I think you, you just need one, to own it, man. Just own it. And I take everything apart. If I yeah, can take too. it apart to push a dance, that's because you're that's because you were a body man. That's what yeah. body men do. They're I was like, never it's no big deal. I I love R and I. I absolutely love it. I love taking things yeah. apart. Do it all the time. Get it, get it stripped down. Give me a shell. I'll fix anything. I remember the first thing I took apart. I was probably in seventh seventh grade, and someone gave me a fifth of Southern Comfort, and uh, I drank it unknowingly what it was and then i puked all over my radio that i just got for christmas <laughs> <laughs> and i it was a boom box man i had to save that sucker so yeah. i took it apart and i cleaned every part and it still didn't work after mm. i put it back together <laughs> oh god i did i used to do that with my walkie talkies i got walkie talkies yeah. for christmas and i just wanted to know how they worked and yeah. i would just take them apart. And I, i'm the same way i take everything apart love it i built all of my bicycles as a kid from stacks of parts for as long as i can never never bought a bicycle it was always yeah. bought from a pile of parts jeez back when yeah, i was me too. single digit uh i had a lawn mowing business by the time i was 10 or 12 and i did all of that by putting together like eight different lawnmowers i learned how to get a briggs and stratton engine running uh when i was probably 11 that's awesome. and keep it going and i mowed yards and everything else see it yeah. was that I entrepreneur did. spirit way back then i yeah, didn't absolutely. know it so, yeah i was I, I think i did something very similar john i had a when i had a guy not a guy my grandfather's house got flooded in allison a, a tropical storm allison and he was going to throw away his lawnmower. And I said, no, I'll take it. I'll, I'll fix it. <laughs> I stripped that thing bare and like cleaned everything and then put it all back together and oiled it. And it freaking. Mm, bah, 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 yep. Yep. I was so <laughs> proud of myself. Well, oddly enough, we do have a theme for our show tonight. And we do have a special guest coming on in a little bit. So, uh, but we'd like to, a little bit of banter, get to know each other a little bit more, let you guys know a little bit more about us. Uh, there's a few things that are going on right now that uh, have come to the attention that are not really in the forefront. Uh, PDR Contractors, if you guys aren't on PDR Contractors, we've had Don Ontrop on the show a couple, two, three times. Did you say Don or Dan? Dan Ontrop. Did I say Don? Yeah, I think you did. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> Dan. 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 Dan O'Dance. Dan, uh, yep. Dan O'Dance. Okay. Dan yeah, right. Ontrop. I was getting ahead of myself with the ah. Yeah. Don yeah. Trop. Don Trop. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, PDR Contractors has their mobile app out now. So, oh, uh, yeah. oh really? Yep. Yes. And on Apple and Android. And Android. Yep. So you just released the Android version. Yes. Yep. So if you guys are on PDR Contractors, go ahead and download that. If you're not, download it and get a part of PDR Contractors. It's not going to cost you anything for the year. And uh, he will not. You'll get plenty of notice when it's going to be charged after a year uh in order to determine if you want to stay on or not so yeah uh well, luckily yeah, yeah no. there's i'm a, on it already i'm on yeah. it too i got on it right away me too well, I, know, I know techs that are uh they're staffing storms from it using it to staff their storms uh, for so. people that don't know it's a a app a program to help staff uh if you have a hailstorm, um you need help it's a way to find qualified techs. PDR techs. Yeah. Even yeah. customers. Customers can find retail techs. Like if you're in California and you're a customer, you got a door ding, you go on there and you're able to find myself or Daniel, wherever you're at. Uh, the cool thing, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insider information. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to share this or not, but all you hail guys out there that are traveling around, you will soon be able to track 
Mike Biggs and Chris from uh oh, nice. from the ants and tool van tool vans yes so the tool vans are going to be on there and you're going to see where they're at and be able to see where they're pinned and go to their location or at least know that they're close by and what's that going to be on that pdr contractors really yeah even on the website Sweet. you'll be able to see where they are you know because there's a map and you'll see you know mike or biggs or or chris and see where they're i at. hope they didn't yeah. i hope they don't tell their wives about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know they're, they're pretty good guys i don't think they're doing anything bad except for okay. drinking drinking uh all right coors hey, that's light. pretty cool chris that's likes cool. the coors light so. yeah. <laughs> oh look they're they're out of hooters i'm gonna just stop there and get my tools yeah <laughs> uh that's it. what else Boy. is going on we we have obviously we have mte vegas coming up there's a lot yeah. of buzz going on with this right now that's only a few that weeks was a away. great show last week love yes. that yeah oh yeah listen into our last show check it out because we uh basically got all right. the inside info on las vegas and mte and what to expect and, and talk about setting the record straight as to, to what the show is going to be you know Right. And then he gave us the booth too. The PDR tool time booth is going to be right next to the IMI booth, which uh, you guys, all us, all your listeners out there come over and say hi to us. We're either going to be bouncing. I'll be at the IMI booth and PDR tool time and Daniel and Hudson are going to be holding down the fort at the PDR tool time booth. John's could be over at mobile tech RX, but hopefully coming over and helping out as well. Yeah, I'll bounce around. We got a lot of meetings going on with that. Our whole new sales team is going to be in force and um, meeting everybody. Yeah. So, so for the for guys that don't know, we're going to have um, maybe one or two cars possibly that you're going to be able to test out tools. You're going to say, "Hey, I kind of think I like this tool, but I want to really kind of." see what it will do for me is it going to really do what i think it's going to do you'll be able to take it over to a car and put it down a window and and put it to work and see if it does do the job that you want or any tool you'll be able to take it over there and test it or if yeah, you want to actually deal. see daniel, daniel fix a dent you got to put it in daniel's hand to make him fix a dent yeah and also yeah. i think daniel is the one who's gonna you know probably rent them and have the insurance on it so put the dent <laughs> In the car yourself. Yeah. In the dog leg. You're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Hudson will be there to show you how to take the gas doors off. That's <laughs> right. You'll get that gas and, filler off. And, and watch me all strangle Hudson in person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> watch me put a dent in the car with Hudson's head. <laughs> but not only, not only that, we're actually even bringing a door ourselves um, off of one. So we can you know all of you guys that complain about being vin scanning or anything else bring your device show it but also to to you know guys can fix the dent on a door and and show what they want so we got a jeep renegade door going to be sitting on a stand as well even Sweet. at our booth renegade yeah. would that be one of your old doors off of your renegade no no that's uh my renegades would be really old <laughs> you, you would poke the tool right through the rust gotcha. oh gosh <laughs> i don't think the the vin, the vin scanning i don't think it's the uh mobile tech it, it's definitely like just how they're designing these these vins on these cars nowadays Some well and the weird. yeah the number one issue is lighting most techs don't realize that the camera is a physical object involving the phone and if you are in a dark shop and trying to scan the VIN down low inside the door jam with no lighting, it, nothing's going like, to see it. Hey, I wish you had like a flash feature that it would flash and light up while I'm scanning the VIN. Well, the issue is some tablets don't have flashes like phones. Yeah, so, I like, use a tablet. It does yeah. have a flashlight on it, though, I think. What I always did when I had my... Uh, ipad mini that didn't have a flash is i carry a flashlight over to the door with me and well he, that. here's a concept too because i know on my chase app when i do uh when i deposit my checks now when i go to take the picture my flashlight actually comes on automatically so there's yeah. a there's some type of programming now that tells that flashlight to come on when i'm taking a picture of my checks yeah we could force the flash to come on if there's a flash available but that's why we give you the symbol in the upper right hand corner yeah oh yeah, the symbol would have some dentech would probably complain 
forcing me to turn on the flash. <laughs> you know what? I, I just use my inspection wedge. <laughs> it's on your tool belt at all times. <laughs> right, now, right next to his hammer. Yes. Guys, I, and I invented the inspection so, wedge, and I don't even use it every time. So. <laughs> but, no, the, the MTE Vegas is going to be one heck of a show, and it is. Uh, you know, a lot of the PDR community was concerned that it wouldn't be about PDR, but I think we're going to see some heavy, heavy door dent stuff. Oh, yeah. Looking through the booths now. Um, oh, that's the other one. Tech tip. Do not look at the regular map on the website for M Mobile Tech mm -hmm. Expo. Expo. Look at the interactive one. The interactive one is the updated one that'll show you all the booths that are currently taken. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So and the interactive map is a, a good map. You get to blow it up so you can actually read the numbers. Right. Exactly, and see exactly where it is. You could chart out, uh, chart out your whole day and and make a map out of it. Hey, yeah. uh, Vince. Yes. Aren't we supposed to call someone? Yeah, we are supposed to call someone. Let's see. Oh, wow. All right, well, let's give this guy a call. <laughs> All let's right. see if he's going to click and answer. So yeah. You guys tell us who we're calling. Oh. Uh, yeah. No, let's keep it a surprise because it's already in the show. It's going to be on the show title anyways. <laughs> oh. Hey, is this Thai barbecue? I would like two city specials. No, 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 no. You get cream from young guy. Oh, cream of oh. guy. Oh, no. Oh, that's Daniel's favorite. <laughs> that is Daniel's favorite. Oh, I hear Vince's favorite oh, is... This is not X-rated. Two for 69. <laughs> two can two for 69. Uh, well... Uh, Don't make us edit this. <laughs> no. Well, hey, you know what? We have Michael Thrower on, and uh, Michael Thrower is the owner and operator and inventor from B&D Tools here in sunny, sunny Southern California. What's going on, Mike? What's going on, you guys? Oh, not much. You have hey, all, Mike. You have what do all, we got here today? Yeah, you have all four of us. You have Vince and Daniel and, and John and Hudson. Man, that's not fair. You guys are teaming up on me. Yes. That's right. <laughs> well, the way you came through the door, I'm glad there was a whole gang of us. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> oh, man. Well, we've been meaning well, to get you on the show for ages now, and, you know, it just, just hadn't worked out until lately. And, uh, you know, I see Mike on a weekly basis. He comes into my shop. We talk tools. We talk all sorts of good stuff about the PDR industry. And it's only about time that we get Mike on here to talk about uh, what he has contributed to our industry, which is quite a bit, Mike. Yeah, especially lately. You know, you've been was, just killing it. Yeah, there was one. Yeah, we're working long and hard hours. That's for sure. Yeah. So I mean the one requirement the, that we needed. Sorry, Danny, I just keep talking. Keep, over go you. ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a horrible joke here. And you one at a time, on. one at a time. You're all going to get a piece of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, I mean, we could we we had to wait a while to get Mike on here because we had to we had to let him finally take all his tools off of eBay so that we could finally get him on. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're so funny. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You're so funny, funny. Yeah. Just, huh. just bring it in the uppercuts in the early rounds, even. You know, if just, we can't, just, we can't. just poking and jabbing, but I'm bobbing and I'm weaving. There you go. <laughs> well, Mike, take us back to where. When did you start making tools for our industry? How long ago? Oh wow! It, you want to go way back? Um, actually, I was a route guy. So the Southern California route guy, um, 1996. 96. Okay. Ooh. 96. Oh, I was grade. trained or semi-trained, um, just kind of thrown out in the field with another guy. Um, you know, a buddy of mine was making a grip of money. He's coming home with cash every day. And I said, Hey, I, you know, I want to get some of that cash. I was working construction. And, uh, so I dropped all my construction tools, threw them in the trash and, I uh, went to work with this guy and, uh, Oh yeah. You know, I'll train you. I'll train you. I was like, yeah, 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 let's go. So, you know, his, his idea of training me was throwing me a light and a, and a tool and <laughs> sending me off, you know, to a, a beat up car while he went and made five, $600 yeah. in about an hour. <laughs> right. Yeah. You just, know, that, just that was it. his idea of training. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's. Yeah. But it worked out. It worked out. But it just took a long time. So all you guys out there thinking if you need need to go get training or do it on your own, pay somebody and get training. Oh, absolutely, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you you'll be ahead of the curve. Yeah. So it took me a year to make money. Six. You trained in '96. And how long did you push until you finally decided to start innovating tools? Um, I was pushing up until. I got kicked out of my garage from making tools for myself. I was making tools for myself, making tools for the industry, uh, pushing at the same time. And that was in 2003 when I just finally dropped everything, closed the doors, opened my shop, which is in Santa Ana, um, in 2003 and been, been going strong ever since. Well, I'm making tools. Making tools, yeah. So I've been pushing quite some time. I can still do it very slowly. Um, and I'm going to have my hand at it tomorrow. I'm going to be over at Vince's with my daughter's car. Uh, and I have, I have a, I have a dent that's probably way out of my pay grade, but I'm going to go over there and have some fun and scratch my head and, you know, I'm, I'm going to be cleaning up a car tomorrow. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you'll, you'll be surprised, dude. I, I'm, I come from old school, uh, PDR where, I had the ambition to chase in my retail stuff. Sure. To chase the big stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I got huge cojones and nothing could scare me. That, and that's fine. I'm just picking on you, Mike. I, I, I have the utmost confidence that you'll fix this big train wreck of a, of a panel that your daughter conveniently get, left you in your car. Oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, now, a, we'll call it. A, it's a smash. Nice. <laughs> I've, I've got your website up. And uh, for those of you listening, you're going to want to go to bandtools.net. And and is spelled out A-N-D. So, um, so it's band D at bandtools.net. <laughs> That'll be much easier for all of you. So. <laughs> yeah, we didn't think we didn't think that through too well, did we? <laughs> is this ba- is this Bandy Tools? Band- is this Bandy, Bandy Tools? <laughs> no, this is Bandy himself. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, so you've been making tools for a long time, and really, the first tool that I ever noticed that came out of B and D was the door jammer. Uh, even, even prior to that, I know you've been making tools, but the first thing that I personally noticed was the door jammer. And I think that door jammer should be in every single person's toolbox. That yeah. That people. pretty much put, put you on the map as far as that was like kind of almost the new industry standard yeah. door jammer. Right? Yeah. Every time I think that everybody has one in their toolbox, Anson, Dent Craft, whoever, Dent, Dent Wizard, Ding King, <laughs> Dent stuff, whoever out there selling my door jammer, I keep getting these big orders. I'm thinking, you mean <laughs> not everybody already owns this thing? Yeah. <laughs> the orders just keep coming. Yeah. Well, they're yep. made they're made indestructible. It's not like people are buying uh, a replacement one. It's like a one and done. The only thing. thing the original one we used the Delrin foot, you know, for the you know, on the side with the latch, the little swivel foot. Did they yeah. attach this um, to the door? That was the only thing that ever broke. And we, as soon as it broke three times, we said, all right, time to make it out of aluminum. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's yep. the last thing I want to do is spend my time putting a new one in a box and having a customer complain. Oh, sure. You know, it's just, it's time to fix it. You know, when we get complaints, we fix things. Uh, that's kind of our yeah. model around here. You know, if, if there's things you don't like about my tools, here we go. We're going to put it all out there. Give me a call and tell me personally, I'll fix it. If I can, if it doesn't make any sense, I won't fix it. Yeah. Well, that's a commitment. Yeah. That's a commitment to your customers right there. That's good. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's where we stand. If you, there's something that makes sense, if somebody calls me and says, Hey Mike, if you really did this, it would improve that tool 10 more percent. I would do it. If yeah. I could do so it. If it's and you're doable. right. You'll, you'll stand by that. Cause I've actually called you uh, personally and said, Hey, wh- why is this designed like this? I don't really care much for this feature on a certain one of your tools. And you were like, well, actually this is why. And I was like, Oh, that makes perfect sense. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to shut up now. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time goes into uh, my R and D on, you know, on these new projects that we've been working on. 
Uh, they get in hands like Vince D'Alessandro, Daniel Grom, Mike Toledo, Ray uh, over in, I don't even know where he's at. But, I mean, uh, we send out tools to everybody. Uh, not everybody, but a good handful of people. And, you know, what do we go a couple months before we actually release? And I know, you know, since Vince is so close, yeah, that a lot of my time is spent with Vince and Vince saying, Mike, go the next, you need to go the extra 5% on it. Yeah. <laughs> You're right there. But if you go the extra 5%, trust me, it's done. Yeah. 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 Your tools dialed in. And, and I thank Vince, you know, dearly for, for sitting and listening to me and having me hang out in his shop and bug him. And Oh yeah. It's a chore sometimes. <laughs> no, it it's, a chore. Chore. <laughs> it's a chore to get rid of me. Um, <laughs> no, well, no. You, You've taken that door jammer now and you've actually expanded that line just a little bit with the prop and lock and the tailgate jammer. So uh, tell us a little bit about that prop and lock. Cause I, I have one of those and you customized it with my name for me. And I, I love that thing. I love mine too. So, so the prop and lock has been in my head for as long as the door jammer, um, or longer. The door jammer was in my head in, the 90s in the late 90s because obviously we all worked with that cheesy stack uh, one. steel stack? sliding the little yeah. stack one with the wing nuts and yeah. we're all working on doors and you keep having to tighten the wing nuts and you bend the wing nuts over because you use pliers <laughs> to tighten them yeah. and it never stays tight and you'll pull your hair out and you, you want to just stop working Yeah. so my idea when I designed the door jammer was to fix that problem as being a, a route guy, that was my number one pet peeve with doing dents. I need this door rock solid so I can be accurate. Being accurate is 100%, as you know, as dent guys, the only way to be yeah. in, in the dent world. Or you're going to cookie out a dent. I don't know what you guys call it. I call it cooking it, cratering it, pizza, uh, whatever, pizza it, whatever you want to call it, putting a bunch We're of little hungry. lows in it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm cooking spaghetti right now. Um, but I mean, that was the biggest pet peeve. And then the next thing I started thinking about is this hood prop business. You know, this putting a little stick or what, you know, I feel like I come from the stone age, putting a little stick in there, um, you know, with a tie down strap or a bungee cord or whatever. Yeah. That's always been to me, not the greatest way to do it. It works. Yes. And it works well when you get it all hooked up, right. And, you know, climb underneath the car and, you know, find a place to, to put your hook on and whatnot. And it just, that one's been in my head forever. It's just, we've been so busy and going back to that eBay thing. Um, <laughs> may, may you laugh about it. There was good money in eBay for a long time until the Chinese mm -hmm. came. Yeah, yeah. So I had my niche there. Um, until probably five years ago made extremely good money found my niche that's why you guys in the hail world didn't really hear of me or see me sure um until i got forced out of there because we were going to go under if i didn't and you know i went to where the, i went to the right place I, I came and found the hail guys the door dinger guys uh stepped up my game um you know, we always had game. We always know, we know, we had known how to make good quality tools forever. We had kind of a line of tools that fit the eBay demand and money. Um, but obviously that, that isn't working anymore. And we are most likely in the next, I don't know, we're trying to get to it, but we're coming out with a completely new line of tools. And we're going to start off with just a few at a time, um, custom tools. Uh, that will be a, very high professional grade tool. Well, now by tool, we've always are done you a, actual pushing tools like PDR are, rods and stuff. Yeah, when I say tools, I mean rods. Yeah. So rods okay. and, and brace tools and stuff. We know how to make them. And, yeah. You know, we've we've made. I've probably made hundreds of thousands of, of rods, just not at the level that guys in the hail industry or. The, you know, just not at that super high end of the material, not the quality of the tool that. If you look at one of my tools, they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, absolutely. It's, uh, let me get these dogs. 
It's just the, yeah. the tensile strength isn't quite up there where everybody wants it. And we knew it, but it, for the eBay and Amazons of the world, it was very competitive. Yeah. It was still better. It was still much better. The tools were much stronger than what China and everybody else is making on eBay. So well, I gotta, kind of found a niche there. I got to commend you, Mike, because you know you've you've reinvented your company in the last couple of years. Here, you you know you you've, you've had a market and it wasn't working for you anymore. And rather than close the doors, uh, you did you know what any entrepreneur does and and reinvent yourself and and provide a need for you know tools that we need in our industry and good professional quality grade accessories that you know we now have the 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 edge pliers we have the the door jammer the door jammer has been out for a while uh you know the the prop and lock prop and lock tailgater the oh failure. you did ask a question yeah. about the ta tailgater and i didn't answer that but yeah um but yeah you're you're 100 correct with what has happened is I actually have had with, with the demise of eBay and Amazon, and it's given me more time to do what I really set out to do when I opened the company. And that was to be innovative Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. not just making a standard rod set. I mean, we were, for so many years, we're selling rod sets, rod sets, hundreds, hundreds of sets a month of rods and that's kind of where you know you get kind of sidetracked going well the money's really good so i might as well i'm not it's not broken we don't need to fix it right yeah so yeah. when when it all went away you had all myself, your eggs. i got a lot i oh. got a lot of ideas up in my head it's time to start putting these things on paper getting yeah. onto the 3d solid works then into cad then onto my machines so mm -hmm. you know we got machines running all day long and rather have rather than having all your eggs in one basket, you've now expanded and and you're creating different lines and, and you know different accessories. I mean, from a tool manufacturer standpoint, tell us because you you have a few guys on here that have made some tools recently, and we've entered the tool game as you know one of these micro companies. And you're you're a bigger company. You've made tools. I've been to your shop. It's huge. You got CNC machines everywhere and polishing things and this and that. It's, you know, you are a professional Dude, great say, machine say it, place. Say it again. What did you say? What, what, I'm huge. Okay. I'm you, huge. You're, you're, you're huge. Nice. I like it. I just like to hear it. You're huge. <laughs> Never hear it from his mind, so. What, one thing that. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on a cloud nine for the next 24 hours. He's <laughs> <laughs> getting, getting that printed on a t-shirt. We're going to have to put this x-rated. <laughs> Vince, yeah. Huge. yeah. So, dang it. Uh, so tell me, Mike, because I know this is something that we've talked about in the past one-on-one, -on -one, and I think it's important for other listeners to hear, too, about, you know, you, your door jammer had, had been copied, and it had been copied by multiple companies, not just the Chinese, but local people, too, here in the States and some right down the street from you. Uh, so, and I know you've, you've spoken candid about it with me and, and, you know, I think it's, it's a good example of, you know, from a tool ma maker like yourself that has been around, what did that, how did that affect you? Did, did it want, I know me, if someone copied me, I'd, I'd want to close the door and be like, ah, screw it. I'm just giving up, but you didn't give up. You just stick what you stick with it and you came out with other tools. Well, you know, here's, Here's the way it goes. Um, once again, with the door jammer, we put a lot of time and energy into it. We made sure all the measurements were right, that the, the knobs were the right distance away from the jam, that the striker was the right length, you know, for the elbow. And, you know, we were getting to where we can get most of the cars. I know there's a couple cars out there that maybe that elbow, it's not long enough. Um, you know, if you have plastic in between the, the striker and the steel door part. Yeah. Um, but we put a lot of time into it. We made it right the first time. Um, the people that copied me tried to get fancy and do different things. They didn't get the they didn't get the knobs in the right place. Uh, they just didn't quite get it right. I'm not saying they don't work. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, look who's carrying my door jammer. Actually, I, I can it. tell you they because yeah. I get everything. And I have them in my drawer and I don't grab them. I don't even touch them anymore because so they, you're, don't, 
They your don't buyback. work. Which ones do you have? You have Dent Gear, Ultra. Jeremy. I don't. I don't have the Dent Gear one. I have the Ultra one, and um, yeah, it just. I mean, he he made it so it extended, which is well, he makes two models. 30, one it, yeah, one that extends and one that doesn't. Yeah, so the, I got the extended model, which te- technically it's a thirty percent design change, I guess, and can be considered different. Um, so maybe that's how they're thinking about it, but it it just doesn't work that good. It just doesn't tighten down enough, and it it is too sloppy. It's just not as tight tight as I'd like it to be. Um, and honestly, I thought I, when I first saw it, I I thought I wanted it because I thought it was going to hinge. Because sometimes you get doors that are oddly shaped, and you want it to almost hinge. Almost need that V shape to the yeah. Have a door prop. kind of a yeah. that's it. and then that's what I thought it was doing, but it doesn't do right. that. Right. It just and slides open, kind of like a prop and lock. Yeah, it just it just goes a little bit longer or shorter, which it doesn't really matter. Has no really doesn't solve a problem. And, and this is what I tell guys all the time. I go, when you're invent, you know, guys say, I have this great idea. I go, what problem are you solving? Well, it does this and it does that, but you're not solving a problem. So it's not, forget it. It's a bad, it's a bad idea, but no, 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 you don't understand <laughs> it, it, it. And I'm like, no, it doesn't solve a problem. Don't, don't make it. It's got to solve a problem. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or it needs to be better. You know, it needs to be, if there's something already out there and you can make it twice as good, by all means, go for it. You know, um, but, you know, but it's got to be measurable. I, it's got to be measurable difference. Yeah. It's got to be measurable. Yeah, it can't be, exactly. it can't be, it can't be eighth of an inch better. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got to be twice as good. I mean, that's the way I look at things. If I'm going to take somebody's something that they've already made, which I don't, but there might come a day that I see something that somebody's making and go, homie's just not doing it right, man. I gotta, I gotta take this to the next level, you know, and I'd probably toss it around. I'd probably call you Vince say, what do you think about me going after this product? And not necessarily, man, I'm not wording that right, but making it better, doing it this, doing it this way. What do you think? Am I infringing on this person? Should I, is, am I going to offend people? Cause I'm very, particular about when i make product or what i do that i i check within the industry to make sure i don't step on anybody's toes and i could attest to that uh, you've you've come over and you've asked me about stuff it's like oh man he's just not doing it right or or you know it could be better if he did this what do you think if i you know you've bounced this stuff like that off of me you know and i said no you know i, I <laughs> i'm i'm so sorry that you you're so close to vince and not me no please <laughs> I, I do own a bench car grinder uh, yeah, I've oh, seen it. Man. Pathetic, I, you know what? Pathetic I've, I've heard about. I've heard the bench grinder sounds. I've, I've heard it all. I'm moving up to Santa Rosa or wherever Grom lives. Thank you, thank you. All right, there it is. There it is. <laughs> thank you. I'm, yeah, how pathetic that sound oh, is. Oh man, that's, I love that's it. like a that's like a quarter horse uh, <laughs> bench grinder. That that grinder's got no wheel. No I want, wheel. I want one. I want at least one or two horsepower. <laughs> Hey, I got a ten horsepower buffer, and then you know, you know what I say: no, no buff too tough. <laughs> well, right. no muff too tough. All right, we're going to the dark side. <laughs> Ring it in. <laughs> roll, roll her back. Roll her back. We're getting. Oh, hey, I have to put a big explicit sign on us now. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Oh. <laughs> there, uh, hey, Mike. So here's a question. Hudson? Yeah, it's Hudson. He said, yes. What's up, bro? You're still there. I'm still here. Yeah. (laughs) Quietly Um, listening. You're you're the people that we all worry about. The guy that's quietly listening in the corner. (laughs) (laughs) Here's a question. I I have only one thing that I really don't like about your tools. Nice. You don't have enough of them? (laughs) (laughs) Make some more. it's, it's, And it's nothing about the functionality of them. I want to know how hard it would be to bezel the edges. Bezel. Uh, 
By bezel, bezel I mean, like uh, so I don't like jammer? 90 degrees on my tools. I like them to be kind of cut off to where it's a 45 so that when I pick them up, they're not kind of like cutting into my hands. I'm wait, wait, a, wait, wait. Princess. I'm, I'm, I'm not grasping what you're talking. What kind of tool? Uh, you mean a rod? Um, no, no, not rods. I'm talking about like, um, like I have aluminum, like the mini lifter body. I don't have the square, like, like the, uh, all, I have the all, like, like I have the prop and lock, right? The prop and lock yep. is um, when you grab it, and this is just me being a princess. Is just when you grab it, it's all ninety degree angles. So it's got those sharp things. I'm always afraid that I might drop Most, it and it's hush, sharp. Hush, hush, and let me let me ask you this: Do you get mani pedis? Uh, if my wife lets me come with her, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hudson, Hudson has baby baby hands. Yeah, I was just baby, no, 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 baby hands. On, on a serious, I make I joke. No, it, I, no, I, on a serious, I, on a serious but, note, we now we could put a heavy chamfer. That's called a chamfer. So whenever you do like the little cut off, you know, knocking the burr off the, the edge on the machine. Yeah. We put a chamfer. Typically, we do, we do about a twenty thousandth of an inch chamfer all the way around. Okay. Um, we can do a large chamfer. For some reason, it just doesn't look right. <laughs> okay. We've done them before. Is that, is that that sharp edge is going to hit something someday? Like I just, I always, I always oh, sometimes chip the pain or something. Videos, you know? Do what? You mean you mean pull a Jim Mitchell and shoot my door jammer out of a spring loaded cannon at fifty miles an hour and falls on the car and scratches it? <laughs> Is that has that yeah. happened? Did that happen? Yeah, that, that happened in a video, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it happened in a video, and I'm thinking, dude, Jim, you have a car without <laughs> a shock. You know how they have the shocks when you raise the hood. So when you yeah. open the hood, it's got mm -hmm. two little shock absorbers, the gas assist shock absorbers. So he's not working on a car without the car doesn't, I don't know if it's a Pinto from 1976. I can't tell what it is, but he's got a car that, you know, you have a prop. So you have, you open the hood and you got a prop it or it weighs 25 pounds and it just falls back down on you. So he opens the hood, props it up, but then takes the prop and lock apart and puts only the side that jumps, that stabs down into the, into the, the latch. Right. Then he goes walks into the car and during a video and then shoots it out and it goes flying out and see you know, the, the, the prop right here. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, Jim, come on, brother, give me a break, man. If you're gonna give a real review, give a re real re review. Just call it a piece of crap. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. sorry. Um, I, I think if you I haven't think... if you haven't manufactured a tool, you don't get to do a tool review. Oh uh, no, <laughs> Mike. No, I'm sorry. Has no, Mike manufactured because, a tool. No, Daniel, if, yes, you has have. Mike, my, has Mike? Yeah, he, ma he makes yeah, the he, paddles. And yeah, the paddles. There's something else he, he did. Paddles. Oh, he gl he glued some leather to a stick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it counts. But it counts. Yeah, that's no, not what I'm saying is it, but, when you manufacture a tool, you understand the process and all the intricacies and how much time it takes to, to put out a tool. You just learned this, right, Hudson? Did you not yes. just learn this? I did. Oh, man. I don't, and you have a whole a different appreciation for toolmakers now? Oh, 100% way more appreciation Thank you. for tool manufacturers, which case, is why I called case my closed. an issue. Case closed. That's not case closed. Yes. This, no, like, I, think, I think you could still, but, I mean, you don't see the other side of it when you don't, but like I still reviewed tools before me. Well, you said it earlier when you called Mike and you said, Hey, I don't like this. And then Mike explained to you why it was like that. And you go, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I remember I think, what I he think, asked me. Case closed. Okay. <laughs> I do think, no, I, How many more cases think, do you want me to close? <laughs> Why don't you just pop open a case and we'll all be happy. Yeah. yeah. No, I think no, but like I think order in the court. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I mean, yeah, I think in that in that what what, what Jim did there, that that wasn't that wasn't okay. He should have called Mike and talked to him about it instead of making it public. That I mean, that's my personal opinion, but I still think that Jim does solid reviews on and that, things. And that honestly that's wow. the difference. That's what we're doing. No, we're Jim doing Jim's hard. a crack up. I didn't mind. I didn't don't take it wrong. I didn't mind that he did it. <laughs> I just thought it was funny that he was such on a tyrant at a time that he was so pissed off at 
all you guys getting tools because all the tool manufacturers are sending the PDR tool time guys free tools. So I think he was jealous. I don't, I'm not sure. Where, I love, I love Jim. Don't get, get it wrong. I think he's hilarious, man. And he's smart. Great. He, he, you know, great. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I, I need technician. to roll this back just a little bit. The tool time guys get free tools on occasion. Oh, but well, for me, not always. Well, yeah, because Mike comes over to I'll my show shop. You my pool, I, wait a I'll show you my tool bill. Wait, wait, oh, oh, wait, wait, all wait. these tool guys have my credit card on file. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. I, I'm going to take that back. Vince does not get free tools from me. He works for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's he just doesn't know he's on the payroll. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> When he comes like, over and brings me a tool and says, hey, what would you modify on this? And I spend time on it and take time out of my day of fixing dents to, to help him with that. <laughs> yeah, of course. He gives me a tool. I, I, and I'm very appreciative of it. And I'm very uh, helpful. I want to help everyone. I want to help Mike. You guys are going to make me cry. You're, you're a giver. I am a giver. <laughs> you know you're what, though? A giver. I'm a giver because this, this industry has given me so much throughout the years. 25 years of fixing dents, and I'm still giving back what they it, what has graciously, graciously have been given to me. And a lot of it I had to figure out myself, but I have no problems giving it back. That's why we're here week after week. We're not getting paid yeah, to do this. That's right. Hey, Hudson, Hudson, by the way, getting back onto the tamper. Um, yes, I will run one specially for you with a nice big soft chamfer on it. Make sure you make it pink. Yes, <laughs> he likes pink tools. I will, I will send a pink one over. I will have yeah. it anodized. <laughs> Dan Craft made him some pink tools, and I'm going to post that puppy. I'm going to I'm going to oh, social yeah. media that oh, puppy yeah. to death. Uh, We're going to make him a pink that pink. Pool. <laughs> PDR tool time t-shirt. <laughs> oh man. Uh, you've opened so what was uh, I had another question coming at me and I rudely cut the Absolutely. Off. Absolutely. Uh, so is it strange? No, is there anything uh anything new uh coming down down the pipe for B and D? Anything that we can get excited about? Well before we talk about new let, let's address one let's thing. Let's talk about old. Let's well newer, but let's address one thing because there's sometimes I don't know how to address this, and it's the edge pliers versus the fender pliers. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You, you know the difference. I know the but difference. I'll, I'll go through the difference. I'll go. I can I'll tell you right it. now. It's in the name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so every most people know the edge pliers. You know, it's got a two-inch throat on it. It is designed strictly for the edge. So, door edge, trunk, hood, lid, hood anything edge. with that triple layer. It, 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 anything it, on the it's edge, a, really. It's a, it's a attacking at a straight-on angle. So, the pliers are straight on to the whatever edge you're going at. It makes it very, very comfortable. When we made the panel fender plier, we put a four-inch throat on it so you got a four inch depth of reach now with a 20 degree angle on the handles and that obviously is to allow you to get by a, a wheel so if you're going to go up in a in a in a fender uh you know you don't have to take remove the wheel and it, and it gives you more throw so you can kind of get up in that in the flare of the fender yeah even in the light, a, a, a headlight pocket you take the headlight out tail light, you go pocket. In the tail light pocket uh it's really good um, and just for the record, I helped him camper that one just for you, Hudson. I said I don't even own those. I don't. I don't. You know, don't you, own, you know what happened? If pliers. you remember, yeah, if you remember what happened, uh, you guys were doing a show, and you said, "Yeah, I was using the edge." Or Vince, Vince goes, "Yeah, I was using the edge pliers the other day." Freaking pinch my nipple off. Yeah, I almost lost my nipple. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh man, I heard it." And I called up Vince. I go, "Dude, we'll, we'll fix that right now." Yeah. So. <laughs> I went back to my machine and I'm all put a huge radius all around this thing for Hudson. <laughs> yeah. No, actually for Vince. So he <laughs> doesn't pinch his nipple off again. Yeah. Um, no, but Mike. we don't. Saving you know, nipples right and left. See? Saving the nips. <laughs> um, so we did that. I mean, we don't want a pinch factor. We didn't think about it. We didn't think people would be throwing their boob into the titty into in their, their artwork. The there? That's because he's got man boobs. Yeah, they're developing. 
Your chesticles funny, are coming in nicely. Yes, my funny, funny thing you say, man boobs. So I'm, I'm at the doctor's the other day, and you know, I get, I, I'm sitting in there a long time, and get really bored. So I start reading. They bring me this paperwork that says my body weight and everything else, and you know how much I, how many beats per minute, and all that crap. And I see BMI, and I'm all hmm, body mass index. Now I know a lot of people don't really know me, but um, so I look at the, I go online, look at the body mass index. And I'm on 26.3 on that. And I'm looking and it says overweight. <laughs> Two more points away, I'm obese. Obese. And for you people that know me, <laughs> you go, dude, you might want to eat another uh, hamburger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? He's, he's, he's probably the same size as Hudson, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sculpted, you know, like eight pack. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> You got the dad bod. Yes. I like it. Dad bods are desirable. That's what they say. Now, now Mike, I'm on your website and I'm not finding the fender pliers. I got the edge pliers, everything else. How can guys get a hold of those fender pliers? They can call me. We just kind of <laughs> haven't put them up yet. It's only been All a few right. months, but I do need to get on there. I mean, my, my marketing person's horrible. Mike, um, yeah, I really need another marketing person. I got to fire this guy, Mike. That yeah. runs the marketing. Yes, Mike. Um, uh, Mike Thrower. Uh, Mike Thrower. Yeah, that that guy. That guy's the worst marketing guy ever. <laughs> so wait, qu- question. So here's the thing: is I was always think thinking of oh, okay, there's not these fender pliers and these edge pliers. Can you technically do the same thing with the fender pliers that you can do with edge pliers? You can. Um, the angle of attack is going to be a little bit funky, so. Picture you're standing at the front of your hood. You got the hood Mm -hmm. propped open with your propping lock. Yes, of course. And you're trying to, you're standing there with these pliers that have a 20 degree angle of attack. So kind of put your hand up in your face area. Yeah. Bend your wrist wrist into that funky position. Yeah. Okay. It's just not going to be comfortable. I I can honestly say I have both and. I use both yep. and for what they're designed for and yeah, yeah. they yep. work really well for what they're designed nice. for. And it's, you know, Daniel, did, have you ever taken the bridge off of it? Because I've taken the bridge off and just put a, like a, a dent craft blue tip, blue mushroom tip on one side. And that works just as effectively too. If I don't need that line of sight with the bridge, a Actually, lot of people funny, don't know that the bridge doesn't come off. That you asked, I did take, I think the fender pliers apart and I started putting all kinds of different parts because I've, I've got a bunch of different stuff and I was, I was trying to make other things out of it. Um, yeah, I would imagine Daniel's built a hot ride out of those things already. Right. (laughs) And, and then, and then I made a suggestion to, to Mike and he showed me a recent prototype of that suggestion, which brings us to Hudson's question. And we might see that down the road. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, it depends on if that suggestion was good or crap. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Well, uh, Mike, so a, cu- a couple things because we're running a little bit out of time here. And uh, so you're, you had your first experience at MTE last year in or, or this year in Orlando. You're going to have a booth at uh, Vegas, correct? We are. We'll be in Vegas. We'll be at uh, booth 2113. Nice. Uh, that's next to Dent Tools USA, down from Dent Stuff, across from kind of catty corner from MTRX. Yeah. Am I saying that right? MTRX. Um, kind of over there in that area. I can't oh, yeah. remember now, what Vin, Vince said you are going to do free uh, nipple rings with the edge pliers. <laughs> <laughs> in your we, we actually turned edge pliers into a uh, nipple ring stud installer. Nice. Very nice. Um, I, I think yeah. all the tattoo parlors will like that. <laughs> so question, I think the uh, people in our diversify. industry are probably going to like that. Are you going to bring anything type of a door edge, some edge of some panel so that we can try out some of your tools there? In your booth, I've actually thought I, I've actually set up, uh, signed up for tool time. Awesome. Okay. So we just have a small ten by ten booth, and I'm inundated with hot models in my booth. Oh. Okay. So I didn't remember I was supposed to make an be, appearance. Yeah. There will not be room <laughs> for 
anything but the models. What time should I be there? <laughs> that is starting graciously at uh, 8 a.m. No, my modeling session. What, what time? Oh, that's right. I yeah. forgot I signed you up. <laughs> right. Well, Mike, we actually have our, our PDR tool time booth that uh, is going to have two cars there. And you're going to have to forfeit a couple of your tools over there so we could show the general public on real life scenarios and let them try it out for themselves. So, yeah, but then, yeah, yeah awesome. what we're going to do is we're going to as many as you need over there. We will uh, drop them off to you or you can come by and pick them up however you want to do it. Yeah. Um, hood props, door jammers, uh, tailgaters. I doubt you'll have a tailgate, but. Um, and that's the problem with tailgaters. People don't know how bad they need one until, until they, need, they need one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, I, I mean, you don't use it that often, but when you use it, you're like, Oh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you I, uh, I was super happy. I had one when I was doing right. Uh, a it hill, just a hill it, car. If you do hell, I think you need the tailgater and the prop mock. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, MTE is going to be great. I, I'm stoked. I listened to your podcast today because obviously we're doing this a week early. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really good podcast with uh, your guest speaker on. I can't remember his name. Sheldon. Sheldon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sheldon. Yep. Um, really informative. Yeah. I can say that. Informative. Yeah. I can't even Speak say Speak English. It. Speak English. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Put too anyway, so much wine in that spaghetti great. sauce. <laughs> uh really really good podcast it got me excited listening to it thinking, yes. this is going to be great we got a whole new market we're getting the west coast dudes uh the door dingers uh we're you know just hopefully they show up yeah yeah well uh, you're going to help with that by by emailing everyone in your mailing list <laughs> yep. so there's that mike guy that does marketing yes come on mike um, have you have you seen him I, I'll, I'll whip them into shape. I'll stop over at the shop and whip I, them into shape. I wouldn't doubt it if I have, no oh, 7,000 emails over the last, yeah. how many Mail years. Jim. I don't know how many of them are good, but I probably have seven to 10,000. So you only emails. need 1%. Yes. There you go. Boom. Send the problem is I Done. gotta go. I gotta go dig them all out. You know, it's just, I got to go into we'll my sell, program. We'll send you a PDR tool time uh, flyer to send to them so they can listen to our show. You got uh, uh, you got five weeks to pull it off <laughs> before Vegas. Yeah. Uh, yep. I doubt it's going to happen. You know how much <laughs> crap I got to get done before MTE? Yeah. I'm still filling orders, and then I got to start making stuff for MTE. Oof. Orlando. Yeah. You know what? You better get going and start making some tools and stop talking to us. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we do have to bring it to, to an end here. But uh, as PDR Tool Time, we want to thank you. You did help us develop uh, the Viper skins, which are available at AnsonPDR.com. Yep. And you can buy which them. Which are in. awesome. They are awesome. By the way. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you finally got some, John, huh? Yes, I did. There's lots of, uh, what's the word you used uh, for that, Mike? Chaffing? Ch 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 no. Uh, camper. A camper. 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 Lots of camper on the Viper skin. Camper. Camper. <laughs> camper. Very that, camper. That's not, a, that's, that's not a champer that we that's, did on the Viper Yeah, that's a, that's a radius. No, 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 Those no. are radiest. No, that's I'm called all, a corner I'm round. Camper. That's a corner round. Yes. So we did a all lot right, of guys, corner that... rounding on that one. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. This brings us to an epic end of this year Tool Time episode. <laughs> we want to thank you, uh, Mike, for coming on. Hudson, John, Vince. Yeah. And I just want to say one thing. Guys, level up your tools. Don't do stupid stuff. Hey, thank you for having me, guys. Enjoyed every minute of it. Fantastic. And keep thank it stiff. Much. For current discount codes, visit pdrtooltime.com. For sponsors like Hog Glue and Hog Tabs, making your job easier, found at AnsonPDR.com. Magnatech Map, Magnetic Utility Tool Map, version 2 is now available. And Mobile Tech RX, the app that makes you money.